So Dave's pool house was functional barely, and it wasn't planned on being remodeled anytime soon, but Hurricane Ida changed that by putting a tree through the roof. So right. we're at Dave's house. What are we going to do here? We're trying to run power and water from the main house, which is right there, All right. to the pool house back here in the back. And our biggest obstacle is about 22 feet of concrete. All right, so why do you need power back here? Uh, because there's a half bath in there and a pump for the pool and eventually a shop and a studio will all be robbing power from that building, so it needs a lot of power. But you have power. It's right here. This is trash power. What do you mean trash power? Uh, it's a tiny little wire and it's uh, shared with bedrooms and other random stuff inside the house. It's not okay. on its own circuit. Okay, so we're putting That's in a, we got. a dedicated circuit for the pool house and the future shop, which is going to go right here. You're almost ready. All right, so it's going to be 100 amp, the 100 amp breaker. Yep. And we have wire accordingly, so we need to bore. The biggest challenge will be to bore a hole under the driveway, which I've never done. Let's go see what we can do. Oh, I forgot the tripod. That's on. Red flashing light. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is our contraption. We got the water hose that's going to hook up here. And fill this pipe with pressure and we got some little holes bored in the other end so we're thinking that if you dig a trench and lay it in the trench and just push it the water will help make it go through and we'll go a ways and then we'll run out of pipe so we'll whack it in half and add some more pipe and then we'll whack it in half and add some more pipe and that's the plan let's we'll see so we have a home depot rental trench trencher and we're cutting the receiving trench now um, it would have been a little nicer if it cut a little bit of a wider trench. The mall would just barely fit in there. But the machine worked fine. It was easy. Um, it was the only one they had available. The mechanism for raising it and lowering the blade um, left a little bit to be desired. It, uh, it took some, some back power to get it up or down. Either one. It didn't, you had to really force it down. Now this is the trench where we're going to push the pipe from, so I'm trying to get it as straight as I can get it. Um, typically it goes straight all by itself unless it hits a root or something, and there's plenty of roots. But anyway, we've got a nice straight trench for laying the pipe in to push it under the driveway. Oh yeah. Give it a shot. You plug the pump in? Uh, yep. Yeah. So right off the bat, the cap cracked. So we have a coupling and a male adapter, no, a bushing and a wooden plug on the inside. Now let's see how far we get with this. That's what we got. Under the driveway, we cut off our little hose adapter here and now we're gluing it on the second piece, which is much larger, longer, which is gonna make it easier to swing them all because the trench is so narrow, it makes it really hard to swing them all. So here we go again. So the pipe was so much easier to beat on with it sticking out the ground down there that we kind of changed our tactic. Instead of waiting until we get this hole to cut and add on, we're just going to keep adding on with it sticking out the ground and uh, making pretty good progress. We're probably halfway across the driveway right now. In and this should get us all the way under the driveway. And now the question will be, where did it end up? Hopefully somewhere over here in the yard and not uh, in the street or something. So this is the system. The uh, hose is running, water squirting out the front of the pipe. I'm holding the bow out of the pipe where it goes in the ground. I don't want it to go in an arc. I want it to go in straight. And um, the pump is getting rid of all the excess water. And we're hitting it with a ball, but we're not hitting it very hard. We're just kind of tapping it. And uh, we make it's, it's steady. Recording. It goes. It was amazingly easy. We did it. Poked it's out funny because it. it looks like it has a big curve in it, but it yeah. can't have had a curve in it because it wouldn't have ended up here. We poked out. Just got to dig it up in a trench or maybe just dig the trench by hand, huh? Hand and saws off. Just in time for the footage. Yep. So our biggest mistake was not going with a two inch pipe under the driveway. We used an inch and a half. Um, mainly because there was a bunch of inch and a half pipe laying around when Dave bought the house. But the PEX water pipe and the four conductor direct burial cable would only fit through the pipe if we untwisted the cable and laid the wires out 
uniformly side by side and taped them to the pecs and it was still an incredible tight fit. Now, the second mistake we made was not going to the hardware store and buying a yellow rope to pull it with. We were relying on a string because that's all we had. We should have got some rope. It's five minutes to the hardware store. We spent two hours pushing and pulling on this thing without the rope. I haven't bought a 100 amp breaker yet, but if I remember correctly, it's pretty freaking expensive compared to a regular breaker. Mm -hmm. They're not like $5. I think it's about 60 bucks. It's funny because it looks just like all the other ones. Okay. I can go by itself. Yeah. Ready? Lots of Vaseline was added to the. Um, to the wires which made them easier to slide through the pipe or even possible to slide through the pipe it also made us harder harder to push because you couldn't grab the darn yeah. things It's gotta be close. Gotta be close. We had close to 20 feet the first time we taped it. Yep. There's an inch. There you go. An inch. There's about three inches. There's about eight inches. So we kept up this battle for a while until right at the end we were about to give up and Holly came out and she pulled on the string while we pushed and we got the last 18 inches just like snapping your fingers. So that's why I say if we had had a rope the whole time, this would have been Stop much less cord. grueling. House where the original um, service went in the house. The original service was underground and here's a piece of it I cut. Look at that big bad boy. It goes underground across the street, that power pole and the meter was on the power pole, it wasn't on the house. But the house had been empty for about 10 years and the entrance has said, no, we don't do that anymore. So David had to get a new service, which is that gray pipe coming down the pole and coming up to his uh, meter pan. So we were just trying to use the same hole to get the service that we're adding that's going to the pool house. And we got it. We're gonna be able to use the same hole. Save us from cutting. So on the supply side of the driveway, in pretty good shape probably as far as we'll get today i can't get over the size of that old feeder um we got enough wire to get inside and hook up to the breaker panel and we're gonna tee off of that <clears throat> little hose bib and hook up the blue but probably not today and on the um line load load side we are ready to stick some cable in the dirt I had to make a, a cross with the trencher, which makes a mess, so I had to hand dig that. Add water into the peck tube. It just uh, took off the hose bib, added a T, a down tube, a valve. It's got another galvanized pipe to get it below string trimmer level. And the pecs will fasten in there. And that will get water to the pool house. Now, the pool house is not made up yet, so can't turn the water on yet. If you guys have ever pulled the wire, you can appreciate what somebody went through to get this direct burial cable in this LB. You must use them all. So here is our conductors going through the trench up the conduit, through the conduit body and into the house. Hopefully. two hands all right she's in 
I didn't have a good way of securing the conduit to the house since there's this concrete slab here and I didn't feel like messing with concrete anchors and spacers. So I put two deck screws through the back of the box into this inch thick cypress. And it probably means the box isn't as waterproof as it was before, but this house has big, generous overhangs, so I'm not super worried about it. And here's the wire inside the house. Just need to build up some conduit and get up inside this box right there. I won't have a 100 amp breaker, right? Here. So our conduit's complete. We are in the box. I just need to wire it up to a 100 amp breaker. It's gonna go right here. And I don't know where that breaker is. I bought it last night from Home Depot for $55. And I have lost it. So, hmm. How long do you look for a $55 breaker before you just go buy a new one? I don't know. All right, I gave up on finding the circuit breaker for now. But here is the trench. And I laid down the last piece of conduit going into the pool house. Right there. I know my siding's all broken up. It needs some love. I'll get to that. And we got power in the building. It's very muddy. I'm gonna clean it up, but it's gonna come up this wall, across the roof, and down to that panel. And it'll be a major improvement over this. All right, so there's the power coming in the pool shed. And I have gotten about as far as I can without going to the store and buying another 100 amp breaker, which is pretty upsetting. Got the sub panel mounted, pump timer mounted, power's coming in. The only thing we don't have is a ground bar. Anytime you're using a sub panel, you gotta have a separate neutral and ground bar. I don't know why, but you do. So I need to go buy a ground bar that fits right here when I'm getting the breaker and uh, soon the pump will be back on, which is very exciting. What do you think, Ruby? What? What do you think? What? All right, good talk. All right. We have added our separate ground bar. So our neutrals and our grounds are isolated, supposedly, although they're both grounded through the box because they're screwed to the same piece of metal, but whatever. And I have purchased a new breaker. This is what a $55 circuit breaker looks like. Looks a lot like the 20 and $15 circuit breakers, but here it is. It's got great big lugs on it for big fat wire. Should work, let's go install it. All right, that is the sound of the pool pump running. This little digital timer is controlling it. Working good. Looking fairly tidy in here. 100 amp breaker installed. Two gauge wire. Looks massive. Grounded. Hooked up to the neutral bar. Good to go. Uh, bonus tip here. Always buy more wire than you think you need. I thought I needed about 120 foot of wire. So about 140 to be safe, giving me a 20 foot margin. And this is my actual margins. This is what I had left over after I went from box to box, about two feet. So yeah, buy enough wire, it's worth it. That would have sucked. Now with new utilities in, getting ready to um, pull up some stumps and add some more concrete to make this building quite a bit bigger than it is now. Um, 
So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.